Hello, and welcome to our video for Playing with Stuff, Playing with the NVIDIA Soul Remix Characters, Setting Up Our Scene. First thing, these are going to be informal videos. So, these aren't going to be strictly by the book. We're just going to walk through how we do stuff, mistakes, errors, and all. So, to get started with, when you open up and download the Soul Remix Characters, and you open up the project, you end up with this. So we end up with two characters inside of our engine. Now our first scene is going to be using some existing marketplace assets and we'd want to import them into our scene and we want to set everything up. So if we go to our launcher and we look through things like our marketplace and our learn tab, we're going to find a few things we're going to want to work with. Now for my example, the Firelands asset provided by Nvidia, by Epic, is something I thought would work well. So if we look for Firelands and actually type it in correctly, you're going to find, oh, it's two words, of course. You'll find the Firelands Infinity Blade assets. So these are assets provided by Epic for a mobile game that they never published that have this little fire scene built into it. So if you were to add this to a project and select your existing project, for example, our sole characters, which would be the one I downloaded, which is this one here, and add to the project, it's going to download it. And it's going to add it to your project and it's become a, another folder inside of there. Now to speed this up, I've already downloaded all these files and I've added them to my project. But I'm showing you how you would do it. The next ones are going to be, for example, some special effects we might want. So if we go to the permanently free collection on the browser, we have this FX variety pack. And this one's got a nice firestorm that we're going to want. Same process, add it to your project, choose your existing project for sole characters, and it's going to go ahead and add it. Once that's done, we're going to end up with our Soul Characters project that we're going to start working with for, well, this video. Once this opens up, you're going to end up with the following, assuming you've done the same thing. We have our character folder with our characters. We have our FX Variety Pack, which is going to have that fire tornado we want. And then the Infinity Blade Firelands examples, which is all the meshes for the environments and then the default maps. Now we're going to want to use the Forge map. This is a pre-built map, already set up, ready to go, just like we want it. And we're just going to have our character walk through it a little bit and do our little bit of our video sequence. You can, of course, create your own. But this is showing how you can start with nothing. We have two characters. And we're going to use existing assets and existing tools. And you don't have to be an artist. And we're going to create something that we can be proud of. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. So now that we've got that, we want our characters in our scene. And if we look through our scene, this scene in particular, we're going to run into a couple problems. First of all, we have our characters here, but they're not really set up as characters. They're just skeletal meshes. Inside of Unreal Engine, we have things like our first and third person character, and we have them set up as templates. However, since we started with the sole character project, we can't start with the template. We could import the characters, but that's for a separate video. This is going to be how to take that sole character template and put stuff into it. So we can add a feature pack. We go to Add New, Add Feature Content Pack. You can choose an existing pack. And we're going to choose the third person blueprint feature. You add that in, and now we get a few more folders for our third person. I'm going to delete this overview because we don't need it. But what we care about is we now have a third person character blueprint. We have a character set up with the default meshes and default animations that we could run through our level. And I can actually show you that. If we hit play, well, nothing's going to happen. We're going to be able to fly around. It's all going to be all goofy. If we look through our actual map, if we can find where it went to, there we go. By the way, if you get lost, like I hit play and all of a sudden I'm lost, you can target anything in your world and hit F for focus, and it'll zoom in on that item, and then you can navigate around normally. Now, the couple things here is we have this. This says bad size. But I can't actually click on it. If you notice, when I try to click on it, it clicks on this light beam. Well, this light beam is a translucent light beam that I can't click through. If we go up to Settings, Allow Translucent Selection, or hit the T key, we can now click through translucent items instead of selecting them. Keep that in mind later. If you actually want to click on this light source, you'll have to turn that back on. But for now, I've disabled that, so we can move this. And you'll notice as player start, this is bad size. Well, let's go ahead and move this item over to maybe our starting area over here. So we're going to have our character over here. 
we're going to move it up. We're going to hit end. And it says bad size. And you'll notice it's having an issue. It doesn't know what to do and it's failing. And anytime we try to work with it, well, it's got a bad size. The reason it's got a bad size is it's colliding. It's colliding with something in this project because for whatever reason, this project, if we look for the sky sphere, the sky sphere has collision turned on. We go down here to collision presets default. It's going to collide with everything in this level. Turn this to no collision, and then you'll find once we move this, it's going to start working again. If you run into this issue, turn off the collision on your sky sphere because that surrounds everything and it's one giant mesh. Now if we hit play, well, we're going to start here and we'll be able to move our character around, but it's moving around because we're flying. Well, the maps and modes and your game modes control your characters. And we have a default game mode that came with our third person character. So we'll go to our project settings, maps and modes, and we'll change it from game mode base to third person game mode. Let's also go ahead and change our startup maps while we're here to forge because that's the one we're going to want. We'll close out of our project settings and we'll hit play. And there we go. We now have our character. It's not the one we want, but we have our default third person character that can run through our map and we're ready to start working on our scene. Now, the next thing we might want to do is actually replace it with our supplied character, our female or a male. So let's go to our blueprint. Let's go to our third person character blueprint. We go to the mesh and this is where we can change out the skeleton mesh. And you can see it's the mannequin, the female or the male. Now if we change this out, you'll notice it changes out. Our viewport changes it out. We can hit play and we have our character inside of our scene. They don't animate because we don't have animation set up for them. That's actually going to be in our next video for setting up the characters. But they do work and they are already set up. Our level set up. Our level's ready to go. Our character's ready to go. We can start modifying things. Now a few tips and tricks here. If you're going to be working in this and you want to avoid annoying messages. So for example, hey, this looks really nice, but like in my example, I took some of our paths over here and I duplicated them over and I made a little ramp for my example. You notice the first thing that happens when you do that is you now get lighting needs to re be rebuilt. Well, lighting needs to be rebuilt because we're using static lighting and well, yes, it needs to be rebuilt. So something you might want to do while you're working on a project, especially in, during the design process, search for light in your world outliner, and grab your lights and switch them off of static. Switch them over to movable, for example. I'm grabbing all my lights, switch them to movable, skylight movable. It's not going to look like we want it. We don't have our baked in light. We don't have things adjusted for our lighting setup, but we're not going to have an error. We're going to be able to see what we're working on and we're going to be able to continually iterate on this until we get our design working. Then we can change our lights back to static, for example, and then we can bake our lights to actually see what they'll look like. So that's just a small little quick hint. If you don't want that air up there, you don't want to worry about rebaking, design your level up first, modify your level, and then you can work on the lighting and effects. But at this point in time, we are ready to go to the next scene. Next scene, next video. We have a scene we can work on. We have our character started. We can play our character. We can move our character around. We have our mocked scene ready to go. Now we need to actually get our characters working and able to do stuff. So in our next video, we're going to cover setting up our characters.